What's a messer? Simply put, it's a knife. Messer is German for knife. Messer, in its plainest terms, means basic knife. Unlike basic knives, sword-sized messers are a specific Middle Ages sword that were mostly exclusive to the Holy Roman Empire, which is now modern-day Germany. These swords take direct design influence from common peasants' knives, known as Bauenfer, which closely resemble modern Bowie knives and utility knives. This type of sword was popular in the region from the 1300s through the late 1500s. They varied widely in blade shape and hilt configuration. Some blades were curved, slightly curved, or straight in profile. Some examples even contained flared tips for a brutal cleaving. Messers are typically defined as single-handed swords, with the exception of some longer varieties, containing a single edge, a nagel, which is also known as a nail, which acted as a handguard, and a means of knocking away opponents' weapons. It is also a critical hilt component in holding the crossguard in place. Messers are further defined by their full-width tangs, meaning the blade steel expands as wide as the handle. Quite noticeably, messers are constructed much like a typical knife, with sandwich scale grips that are pinned or riveted into place on each side of the tang. The unique characteristics and overall distribution of mass of these weapons make these swords handle in a very specific way, being nimble yet powerful cutters. These still retain characteristics well suited for thrusting. Let's take a quick look into the journey of the Messer. Enjoy. We have a few differentiations to make when it comes to these swords. Lang's Messers, translating to long knife, sometimes also referred to as a gross messer, meaning great or very big knife. Gross messers typically fall in with the longer versions of this type. These classifications are where messers truly become swords over knives. Lang's Messers were carried by middle class and upper middle class civilians and varied in their luster based on the owner's wealth. They were used in self-defense, judicial duels, and when arming themselves as levied militia. Lang's Messers eventually ascended the middle classes and became fashionable with nobility. Take a look at this beautiful gross messer made from Maximilian I. We see another version called the Kriegsmesser, meaning war knife. These impressive hand-and-a-half or two-handed swords were carried by professional men-at-arms, quite famously the Landsknecht, the famed outlandish affluent German mercenaries of the late Middle Ages. The Landsknecht were well known for their complex and state-of-the-art weaponry. Kriegsmessers still hold strong today as one of the greatest swords ever wielded. Many messers contain sharpened clip points on the back edge, aiding in thrusting and for the performing of sneaky back edge cuts. Messer swords are directly related to the falchion, another Middle Ages sword design that was popular in the Crusading era. Falchions only differ from messers in their hilt construction. In many cases, they share nearly identical blade profiles as messers. Falchions are typically constructed like typical European swords, such as the arming sword, with a hidden tapered tang that exits through the pommel and is peened down, holding the hilt components together. Ewart Oakshot categorized Middle Ages European double-edged swords in the well-known Oakshot typology. In a similar fashion, James Elmsley categorized messers and falchions with the Elmsley typology. Elmsley differentiates using the nomenclature M for messer and F for falchion. More on that later. Today, we are showcasing this Langs messer made by Landsnecht Emporium in Hungary. Let's take a look at a few approximate historical examples of this type. Landsnecht Emporium has been consistently growing and offering incredibly well-made and researched knives and swords. They have become well-known for the historical focus that they put into their incredible messer offerings. This is known as their Gottfried Langs Messer. It contains a beautiful mixture of Elmsley and Oakshot type fittings, such as the Type 3C blade, Type 15 crossguard, 
and a butt capless grip in the CC1 shape. This example seems to have a gentle curvature. The blade is made from 51 CRV4 high carbon steel and the cross guard and nagel are individually shaped from mild steel. The blade has a elegant and consistent impressive wide fuller and a hollow ground secondary bevel on the edge. This is their thick blunt version designed for full contact HEMA sparring. The edge is rounded and very robust. It has a tapering drop from 4 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters, and the tip boasts a nice robust reinforcement for thrusting. This version is quite a bit heavier than its sharp siblings, but it still weighs in at a mere 2 pounds or 900 grams. One aspect that I love about Landsnack Emporium is how they disclaim that imperfections and tooling marks are to be expected. These imperfections give this sword such an authentic detail and aesthetic. Little tooling marks here and there remind you that this was man-made and not factory made. The handle scales are made from select hand-shaped beech and pinned in place with tubular brass. The handle shaping is definitely noteworthy. It tapers towards the guard in such a way that you really feel a positive and sure grip when handling. The profile is very dynamic and gives you lots of ways to interact with the handling and edge alignment. As for its handling, at first it feels a bit blade heavy, but once you somewhat let the messer move as it wants to, you can feel how much controlled power you can create. Being nimble yet powerful, it's really something to behold. This is such a well-tuned sword that you can truly feel doing lots of the work for you, and it does it well. I will be sure to put a link in the description to Landsnack Emporium. I am truly proud to own this highly functional trainer. It's sure to be another priceless tool on my journey through historical European martial arts.